Hi, it's Pamela. In this tutorial, we're going to go over some visual storytelling tips that you can use to create engaging animated whiteboard videos with Doodly. Hey, and welcome to the official Doodly YouTube channel. If you enjoy our content, please click the like and subscribe button below. Now let's get straight to the video. Making a whiteboard video can be a fun, easy way to share your message with the world. But if you want it to look professional, there are a few things you need to know from a visual storytelling perspective. As I go over the tips, I thought it would be fun to create a video and kind of implement them as we go. So let's pretend that I'm an office manager and I want to create a quick training video on telephone etiquette for my staff. So what are the tips? Well, the first one is to take inspiration from a magazine cover. You'll notice here that my initial image does look a little bit like a magazine cover. Here's my inspiration. I was in Canva and I just looked up magazine templates and I was just scrolling through until I found one that appealed to me. And this is kind of, not exactly, but sort of what I'm looking for. So I have a large image of a lady, which I have here, a big headline across the top. So there's mine. And then some areas here for my little uh, sub headline. I did also create a little colored background just to give it some interest in the background. So let me go ahead and change this for our, our story that we're doing. So I said it was telephone etiquette. I'm a big fan of increasing the size of our characters. Okay, so we have our magazine cover or our title sequence here. So let's go ahead and create a new scene. And we'll move on to our second tip, which is show, don't tell. So we wanna use visuals to illustrate the story instead of relying on words only. For example, if you're teaching a lesson on anatomy, it would make sense to have an actual image of the body and the body parts, rather than using words to describe, you know, where the brain is located or, you know, how many fingers are on a hand. And the same is true of, you know, other stories that you're gonna be telling. So instead of using words to describe, you know, our telephone etiquette, we can use photos or images, illustrations, what have you. So I am going to go to my props tab and I'm going to go ahead and import a graphic that I found that I'd like to use just kind of as my base here. It's of a customer service representative on the phone. And that kind of tells you the story. We see that she's got her headset on and that she's smiling. So for my narration, I'm going to say something like, you know, when answering the phone, be sure to smile and speak clearly. Greet callers in a friendly manner and listen carefully. So how can I say that? You know, I'm gonna say that with my words as my narration, but what else can we do? So we wanna highlight, be sure to smile and speak clearly. So we could take an arrow or something and just point it out, point out that smile. Or, oh, I know what we could do, some sort of sparkle. Let's see if we have a sparkle. There we go, sparkles. I think I had imported this before, but that will work great. So I'm gonna add these. So we want her to smile. So when I say smile, these little sparkles are gonna appear. Smile and speak clearly. And then I can, you know, just because I'm saying don't rely on words doesn't mean you can't use the words. So let's go to text and I'm using this text. So we're going to see. And then what else was I going to say? I was going to say, greet them in a friendly manner. We, we don't need to spell that one out. Um, let's say, be sure to listen carefully. So let's add another one. If they've been waiting on hold, apologize for the delay and, pro and provide any assistance they may need. This can be my next line. So if they've been waiting on hold, what can we do to illustrate waiting on hold? Well, we could do like a stopwatch or a clock. Let's see. Here's a stopwatch. Let's use this one. Let's just place it right there in her hand. So they've been waiting on hold. 
this is going to illustrate that time has passed. We want to apologize for the delay or thank them for the patience. So let's do a little speech bubble. And we want to keep this really simple. So we don't want to have a big, long scripted, you know, thank you for holding for so long and blah, 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 blah. We just want to say, thank you for holding. I apologize for the delay. Or, so sorry for the delay. I'm not sure what we're going to say exactly, but let's get, let's get a font here, first of all. Let's just say thank you for your patience. I just want to keep it short and simple. My next tip is to simplify. Don't be afraid to simplify these complicated concepts by breaking them down into smaller sections and using visuals to aid in comprehension. So you could use visual cues like arrows, circles, and other shapes to make it easier for viewers to understand what's going on. So for example, where we say, listen carefully, we could, if we wanted, maybe put a check mark right by her ears here. So let's go to this and let's say, check. Check mark. I have a few of them. I think there's also one in Doodly called Tick. Yes. So I'd like to use this one. So don't be afraid to use these. They're simple, but they point out exactly what we want them to see. It comes in right there. And this will come in before the speech bubble. So it's going to go listen carefully. So we're going to draw the words and then we're going to do a check mark right there on top of her ears. I'm not 100% in love with this, but I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to convey to you. Another good tip is to use the power of symbols. Symbols help viewers connect with your message quickly and easily. So you want to use symbols that viewers are familiar with, right? So like the thumbs up icon, you know, like for Facebook or whatever, or a heart for love or an arrow for direction or progress. In this example, we've already used some symbols. We've used this tick mark. I think that people are very familiar with what that means and these little sparkles. And let's see, what else could we use? Well, the telephone, this little, this is a nice little symbol. People know what this means, this little telephone. And of course, the little stopwatch to convey the passage of time. And finally, cut the clutter. Too much information can make it difficult for viewers to focus on your message. So try and keep it simple and concise, removing any unnecessary elements from your visuals and take out any words or phrases that aren't useful. So remember, I said I wasn't overly fond with my choice for this. I, I don't like it visually. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. I am saying listen carefully in my narration and then I did write it down as a bullet point. So I think that's enough. I think it's overkill to put an arrow to her ear or what have you. In this example, other examples, it might be appropriate. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do some timing adjustments and I'll come back and we'll discuss this. All right, I'm back. I made just a few little uh, timing tweaks. So let's take a look and see how we're doing. So here's where I'd start my voiceover. And we'd come on and we'd have a smile and speak clearly. And there she is. And then listen carefully. And if they've been on hold for a long time, be sure and apologize. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And then I'd kind of finish up whatever it was I was going to say. And I think that this particular graphic here tells everything that we wanted to convey in our little telephone etiquette script visually. Yes, I do have a few words there to kind of help reinforce it, but most of it is visual. Visual stories can evoke emotion and help people remember and relate better to your content. By following these tips, you should be able to create professional looking animated whiteboard videos with Doodly that will engage and inform your audience. So get ready to tell some amazing stories with visuals. I hope this gives you some ideas. Thank you for watching.